feudal Japan, where testosterone-fueled samurai were the talk of the town. But wait, ever stumble upon a lady samurai stealing their thunder? Ah, Tomoe Gozen, the name they whispered. Now, feudal Japan, a tapestry of tradition, honor, and a social hierarchy that would make your head spin. At the top of this intricate ladder sat the emperor, a divine figurehead, while the real power often lay with a shogun, a military leader. This was a time when power wasn't just about how much gold you had, but how skilled you were in the art of war and diplomacy. Central to this era were the samurai, the military nobility. Oh, and they weren't just your average sword-wielding enthusiasts. They were in a league of their own. Bound by the oh-so-cheerful code of Bushido, they placed honor somewhere above, you know, staying alive. It wasn't just about mastering the art of stabby-stabby. It was a full-blown lifestyle. Loyalty, respect, martial prowess, and probably a lot of brooding were the daily specials. And while we love to give them the Hollywood treatment today, back then, it was less glitz and glam, more discipline and, well, duty. But let's zoom out a bit and look at the broader picture of life in feudal Japan. Picture bustling marketplaces, artisans honing their crafts, farmers tending to their rice fields, and monks in temples seeking enlightenment. The air would be filled with a scent of incense, the distant sound of a shamisen playing, and the murmur of townsfolk going about their day. For women, life was delineated by societal norms. They were the nurturers, the caregivers, often confined to domestic spheres. They were expected to be paragons of virtue, grace, and subtlety. But as with any society, there were exceptions. Every so often, a woman would defy these norms, not by rebelling without a cause, but by embracing roles traditionally reserved for men. Among these exceptions were the rare female warriors, a testament to the fact that courage and valor weren't just the domain of men. These women, though few, carved a niche for themselves in legends and historical records, and shining brightly among them was Tomoe Gozen, a name that would resonate through the annals of history. In essence, feudal Japan was a realm of contrasts, a world where tradition met change, where the old coexisted with the new, and where every individual man or woman had a role to play in the grand theater of life. All right, so we've painted a picture of feudal Japan with its samurai brooding and codes of honor. But nestled within this testosterone-fueled world was a woman who would give any of these samurai a run for their money. Enter Tomoe Gozen, the samurai world's answer to who run the world? Girls. Born into the high-octane world of warrior families, Tomoe wasn't playing with dolls. She was probably disarming them. From a young age, she was thrown into the deep end of martial arts, archery, and horseback riding. And let's be real, while most kids were learning the ABCs, Tomoe was mastering the art of slicing, dicing, and riding into the sunset. Now, being a woman in this world wasn't a walk in the park. Imagine trying to break the glass ceiling, but the ceiling is made of swords and societal expectations. Every step of the way, she had to prove herself twice as hard, facing side eyes from those who believed the battlefield was no place for a woman. But Tamoe, she thrived on challenges. Amidst all this, she caught the eye of Minamoto no Yoshinaka, a general who was kind of a big deal. Their relationship, it was the stuff of legends. Some say she was his first captain, others whisper of a romance. But one thing's for sure, together they were a force to be reckoned with. So while feudal Japan was busy with its samurai politics and codes, Tomoe Gozen was carving out a name for herself, showing that it wasn't just a man's world. And trust me, this is just the beginning of her tale. From the tales of her early life, we've established that Tomoe Gozen wasn't just any woman of her time. 
But when the drums of war sounded, how did she stand out amidst the clang of swords and the cries of warriors? The Genpei War, a tumultuous era in Japan, saw the Taira and Minamoto clans locking horns in a power struggle. Think of it as the ultimate family feud, but instead of passive-aggressive comments, there were arrows and blades, and right in the heart of this chaos was our heroine, Tomoe. Now, the Battle of Awazu wasn't just another day at the office for Tomoe. While some of us get overwhelmed by a tricky spreadsheet, she was out there facing and besting seasoned warriors. And she wasn't just swinging her weapon around wildly. Tomoe's style was a blend of raw power and finesse. She wielded her naginata, a weapon that's like the love child of a spear and a sword with unmatched skill. Each strike was calculated, each parry timed to perfection. It was said that she could ride through a sea of enemies, her naginata dancing like a deadly whirlwind, cutting down foes before they even realized they were in danger. Eyewitnesses, probably those lucky enough to survive her onslaught, recounted tales of her valor. They spoke of her riding down archers, deflecting arrows, and engaging on one-on-one -on -one combat with the best of the Taira warriors. And she didn't just rely on her naginata. Tomoe was adept at archery, with arrows that found their mark with deadly precision. On horseback, she was a force of nature, charging into enemy lines, causing disarray and emerging unscathed. Historical records, typically reserved in their praise, couldn't help but acknowledge her prowess. In a world dominated by male warriors, Tomoe's name was spoken with respect and, let's admit it, a bit of fear. But legends often come with their share of mysteries. After her spectacular feats at Awazu, Tomoe seemed to fade from the battlefield. Some say she was ordered to retreat, as Minamoto no Yoshinaka, her possible lover, couldn't bear the thought of her falling. Others believe she chose to step away her warrior spirit seeking another path. The truth, lost in the mists of time. Follow the tumultuous events of the Genpei War. Tomoe didn't just fade into obscurity. No, a warrior of her caliber doesn't simply vanish. Instead, she transitioned from the roaring battlefields to a life of relative tranquility. Historical records indicate that Tomoe, after her days of slicing through enemies, chose the path of spirituality. She entered a monastery, dedicating herself to a life of prayer and contemplation. Imagine the discipline it takes to go from being a celebrated warrior to a devout monk. But then again, discipline was always Tomoe's strong suit. Now, let's address the whispers about her personal life. After her time as a warrior, Tomoe did tie the knot. The man in question? a local bigwig with whom she settled down. While the records aren't brimming with romantic tales of their life together, it's safe to say that he must have been someone special to catch the eye of such a formidable woman. Tomoe's legacy is etched in more than just history books. She became a beacon of inspiration for poets and storytellers. Numerous poems and tales were crafted in her honor painting her as a figure of bravery, grace, and unmatched skill. These weren't just casual mentions. They were elaborate narratives, celebrating her life and adventures. The challenge with figures like Tomoe is separating the person from the legend. But here's the thing. With Tomoe, the person was the legend. Every tale, every poem, every historical mention only solidifies her place as one of the most iconic figures in Japanese history. Feudal Japan, while often painted with a brush of strict traditions and rigid gender roles, had its fair share of female warriors or, or honor bugeisha. These women weren't just playing dress up. They were trained in the art of war, mastering weapons like the naginata and the kaiken. And while Tomoe might be the poster child for badassery, she had company. Cultural factors played a significant role in this. In times of war and unrest, 
when men were off battling and the homestead was under threat, women stepped up. Now, let's talk comparisons. While Tomoe's exploits in the Genpei War are the stuff of legends, other female warriors had their moments in the sun. Take Nakano Takiko, for instance, who led an all-female unit during the Boshin War. Or Hojo Masako, a nun turned political leader who played a pivotal role in the early days of the Kamakura Shogunate. Each of these women, in their own right, carved out a space in a male-dominated world, challenging perceptions and rewriting the narrative. So, next time someone mentions samurai, remember it wasn't just a boys' club. Tomoe and her fierce sisters-in-arms made sure of that. They didn't just break the mold, they shattered it. Cheers to the unsung heroines of feudal Japan.